Else, I am just so excited to have you on the webinar tonight. Tonight's topic is careers in aviation. How can we work to take this passion of ours, to take it and really turn it into something that ends up paying the bills for us? That is what we're ultimately after in this case. And that's what I'll be sharing with you all this evening, taking that passion, turning it into some dollars, whether it's, listen, Jason, I just want to be a flight instructor. Man, I want to be a corporate pilot. I want to be an airline pilot. From where do we start to what is the best course of action? What opportunities are available to you in that case? That is what we're going to chat about tonight. I've asked a good friend of mine, Keith, who you guys actually just uh, recently saw in our recent video, Flying the King Air, uh, to kind of share some of his wisdom as well. And we'll be hearing more from Keith a little bit later on in the webinar. So let's dive into it first with a little bit about how this works. What's going to happen is I'm going to present just like you're seeing now. And feel free to ask questions at any time. Now, how you and I communicate is via your handy dandy go to webinar control panel over there on the right hand side of your screen. If you left over there, that's where it loads up. Underneath the questions tab, any questions you have, you can type in your questions there. If you're on a mobile device, tap the little question mark, your keyboard will pop up. You can type in your questions that way. Um, I can see those questions. Keith, who is, who's in there, can see those questions. Uh, Clay, who runs a very large, uh, very successful flight school, is helping us out tonight. He can see those questions, uh, as well as you guys, if you're fans and members of ours, you all know Matt as well, our online ground school manager. He's in there helping out, and my lovely wife, Ashley, is going to be in there in just a bit, helping out with questions as well. So feel free to ask those questions at any time. The guys and gals will answer them during the webinar and I'll take some towards the end. This is being recorded too, so if you have to leave early, it's no big deal. You come in late, whatever it may be, we always record our webinars so you can check them out a little bit later. A little bit about myself because I know uh, not everyone on this webinar knows who I am. Perhaps you ended up on this webinar from uh, some marketing that Clay did, from some Facebook advertising, whatever it may be. I know not everybody on here knows uh, about uh, myself, uh, so I wanted to share that real quick. Um, I was actually collegiate CFI of the year in 2008. Uh, this isn't totally public information just yet, the 2016 part. Actually, they announce it tomorrow, so sorry AOPA, I spoiled it. Uh, a day early for you, but I was named AOPA's most outstanding flight instructor in 2014, 2015, and just got the phone call last week uh, that again in 2016. So, and that is actually not, that's something that you, the people, vote on. Uh, so, very blessed uh, to be able to continue that streak as well. Uh, nearly 10,000 hours of flight instruction, and every month we help thousands of pilots. Uh, pursue their dream of flight through our online ground school. We'll do thousands of members that go through there a month uh, that we work to help prepare for their written, their knowledge test, prepare for their check rides, and really set them up for success, whether it be a fun hobby or it's a career in aviation. Uh, we work to help them and get them heading that way. And those of you I know, I saw uh, uh, Joseph and, and, and Phil, and I saw Michelle and so many others um, on the webinar, there's, there's uh, JB, Armando, so many of you who are members of ours or have been members of ours um, that, uh, that just know that mentorship, that community side of, the, uh, uh, of our webinars that we do and the community side of the online ground school. So just very neat, uh, very uh, excited to share that with you all. So let's dive into it. Again, I highly suggest you have pen paper for this because you're going to want to take some notes here. And let's start with the topic of who's hiring in aviation. Because if you've been around aviation at all, you've heard this phrase, pilot shortage. And what does it really mean? Is the pilot shortage a legitimate thing? Is this something that some crafty marketers are making up? What really is this? Well, I can tell you if you run a flight school like Clay does, or if you're in a flight school environment, you feel the pilot shortage because flight schools can't keep flight instructors right now, CFIs, certified flight instructor, certificated flight instructors, technically what CFI stands for. Flight instructors 
they're getting hired into every regional carrier, every, every corporate operation, whatever the next step for them in their career path that they wish to take, the opportunity is there. They get the hours they need very quickly. And you're going to see, we're going to talk about this, that the power of becoming a flight instructor to make some side money, because it's, it's not a ton of money, but make some money finally in aviation and build up the resume and build up the hours and more importantly, build up the Rolodex of contacts. We're going to talk about that, using that as a launch pad as well. There's many other options you can go with this now. But let's start with who's hiring in aviation. And I'm going to share some stats with you. And these aren't stats from, from flight schools trying to get students in. The two statistics and reports I'm going to share with you are from the two largest aircraft manufacturers. They are Boeing and Airbus. And both Boeing and Airbus normally just are very quiet companies. They just kind of do their own thing. They build their airplanes. They stay out of what we do other than safety operations, that sort of stuff. Both companies in the past 12 months have come out and said, we have more orders right now on, on paper with deposits that are paid for than there are going to be pilots to fly them. Boeing literally said that based on the orders we see, and they've got orders, you know, they, they order all the way out to like 2040, almost 2050 is how far out their orders go. That based on current demand, that when we get to a certain spot, there just will not be enough pilots to fly the airplanes we're even building. Yet the airlines need them. The airlines need these new planes. Here's Boeing's study. They actually issued a PDF. You can Google it. It's called their Pilot and Technician Outlook. Read along with me and follow my cursor. This is from Boeing. As global economies expand and airlines take delivery of tens of thousands of new commercial jetliners in the next 20 years, there is and will continue to be unprecedented demand for personnel to fly and maintain those airplanes. In support of this tremendous growth, the aviation industry will need to supply more than 1 million new commercial airline pilots and maintenance technicians between now and in 2034. That's combining pilots and mechanics. They break it down right here. They say they forecast demand that they need 558,000 new airline pilots by the year 2034, which sounds so far off, but it's not. How on earth, and, and this isn't just create pilots, this is create commercial level pilots, career-minded pilots, we need to create over a half a million of them in less than 20 years. And you think, how, how is that possible? And we are starting to feel the constraints of this now, and it's just begun. Boeing continues to kind of break it down a little bit more, and you can see how they break down where that is. If you feel like living abroad for a bit, uh, Asia Pacific is your largest market there, followed by North America and Europe are tied with almost 100,000 pilots needed. Not just any old pilots, we're talking commercial pilots here, not just hobbyists. We need to make a whole lot of pilots. Airbus came out with their, a very similar type report. It's right here, I took a screenshot of the site because again, Boeing knows, knows their demand, and Airbus's demand is a totally separate thing. So Airbus continues all the way on down, talk about the $1.8 trillion need um, of 500,000 new pilots over the next 20 years. These are the two largest manufacturers of commercial aircraft, and they're both saying that we are going to make airplanes in 20 years that very possibly that there's not going to be pilots to fly them. So those of you on this webinar are thinking, geez, I'm really interested in getting into aviation. I think this would be a really fun, uh, fun job to have or you know, something exciting that I can get excited about and not feel like a 9 to 5 type gig. You couldn't have ended up in aviation at a better time because it is just so popular right now. By the way, if you're on this webinar and you're a flight school owner or aspiring flight instructor, I'd be using these kind of reports in your data and in your marketing to say we need pilots. Continuing, a Bloomberg article, fairly uh, recent article as well, shrinking pool of future pilots keeps major airlines on edge. Other articles talking about 
uh, the, the shortage and everything else and how airlines overcame terrorism, overcame bankruptcies, and now the new thing they have to overcome is the pilot shortage. The article goes on to say, how could we have a pilot shortage when the average captain makes 200 a year, some pushing as high as 300,000 a year, and yet we still can't get these pilots. And they kind of show how the shortage is unfolding over, uh, over the next 10 years as you can see it there, and as it continues to grow. And you think it's here right now, and we're already feeling that constraint. So the question is, okay, Jason, I'm sold on this. They need pilots. Where do we start with this? What, where, where do we go? Here is really the career aviation type blueprint. And this is, I know a lot of you guys on here are already pilots, so I'll work through this quickly, but I understand a lot of you may have stumbled on this going, where do I even start? Because that is the biggest constraint on this pilot shortage is that so many people just think, where do I even start in, in aviation? I, I don't even, how do I take my first lesson? How much does it cost? Where, there's just so many questions before we even get started that there's just a, there's a barrier to entry with it, right, already. But where we start is everybody becomes a private pilot. From there, we pursue our next rating in this case, which is like an additional license. That's not the right verbiage, but, but just like you, uh, you have different classes of driver's license, we do the same in aviation. You step up to your instrument. From there, we step up to commercial pilot. Now, don't get too excited because the term commercial pilot is quite misleading. The definition of commercial pilot I'll give in the FAA Part 61 definition is a pilot that has 250 hours that can fly, that's past the commercial pilot check ride, that can fly for compensation or higher. You see, back in your private pilot and your instrument pilot days, you cannot fly for compensation or higher. You can split costs, what's called your pro rate of share. You can split costs with friends that you go flying with or other student pilots and everything else, other pilots, I should say. Um, but when you become a commercial pilot, that's when you can actually charge for your flying services. Now, it's very hard to get a job, a low hour aviation job in this case, and I'll share some that I've oddly enough had. But most people go from commercial pilot. It's always funny when you tell people, well, I'm a commercial pilot. The next thing they go, well, what airline do you fly for? Well, you go, well, I really don't fly for an airline. I just barely met the commercial pilot requirements, and I got the certificate. I got a whole, I still have a little bit of ways to go. But So it's a little bit of a misleading uh, representation of it. It just means I can fly for compensation or higher. From there, I could go the flight instructor, CFI, Certificated Flight Instructor, Certificated Flight Instructor Instrument. It's a separate one to teach instrument. Uh, just a CFI can teach private and commercial and in two years teach other CFIs. I could go the multi-engine route because one thing you'll realize, and I'm sure Keith will hit on this when he talks, is multi-engine time is like gold, especially if you want to go the airline or the corporate route. I mean. It's very tough for these guys to take people with just single engine, like a 172 time, and everyone starts there. But when you have an opportunity to upgrade to a multi-engine aircraft, it is more expensive, but with that greater expense, there's added value in the logbook as well, which makes it so nice. Uh, getting that time, so you can step up to a King Air one day and apply for a job like that, whatever it may be. And then there's also just looking at low hour aviation jobs. And I'll share with you some of mine and some of my stories. My, actually, you see where I have 10,000 hours of flight time. Well, about three or 4,000 hours of that was built as a traffic pilot. In fact, one of my first jobs that actually launched all these other little random uh, jobs down here until to this day, I'm just a full-time flight instructor. Um, but traffic pilot really launched all this. And I was in Jacksonville, Florida, and my entire job two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, I flew the Beltway, uh, 295 9A were the roads, the Beltway around Jacksonville, and I would report traffic backups and traffic accidents, and that's what I did. I would report them to a, a local radio station there, and that was my life. Two hours from seven to nine, uh, and from four to six, every single day, with the exception of the weekends. You build up a ton of time that way. But again, these jobs don't just get advertised on Monster.com and Indeed and all these different job sites. All of these jobs, really, you've got to be proactive 
at the airport seeking these types of jobs out. One of my jobs was wildlife spotting. We'd go up and these researchers had tagged uh, GPS locators in Wales. And we'd fly out and we'd use the, the, the latitude and longitude to find their, the whale's GPS location. And these scientists would just look out the window and, and write notes about these whales. And I was just happy I was flying. I was logging time. And occasionally it was multi-engine time, depending on what we flew. And it was, it was fun. Uh, and it, it, again, you realize that flight time is very valuable. I was a banner tower. Like you see the banner towers flying banners up and down the beaches. For a little while, I was a lady's personal pilot. This is this is going to sound a little bit crazy. There was a lady who owned a private island in the Exumas in Bahamas, and she made just this little dinky runway. And myself and a very a, a good mentor friend of mine, we would we would fly down. She would call us like on a satellite phone, say, "Hey, I need this wine, and I need this bag of potato chips, or whatever." We'd go to the local grocery store. We'd get her stuff. We'd throw it in the plane. We'd fly down to her little private island. We'd drop it off. We'd give her her stuff, and we would leave. And that was our gig. I was a uh, an aviation grocery boy. Is that <laughs> is that an appropriate title for that? But these are all low hour aviation jobs that. It's kind of the area where you cut your teeth a little bit in aviation sometimes. Now, a lot of you may not want to go these routes, or maybe these, these, you're in a small town, these opportunities aren't available, they're already filled up. Becoming a flight instructor is huge. Becoming a flight instructor, after you become a commercial pilot, becoming a flight instructor opens up an entirely new world for you with all this. It opens up opportunities to teach, to really instill that wisdom in, in students, and more importantly, you're getting paid to build up hours in your logbook because it all comes down to hours. Because the ultimate goal isn't to be a traffic pilot the rest of your life or, or a wildlife spotter, it's to what? Probably for most of us on this webinar is to be an airline pilot or be a corporate pilot. But let me start with this. The very first bullet point here is that it takes a college degree. Yes, these airlines are desperate for pilots, and, and desperate doesn't even summarize it in some cases, and the need's going to continue to grow. Yet, these airlines still have standards. In fact, some of these, the, like the hour requirements, are mandated by the FAA, the 1,500 hours that's mandated by the FAA now. But I promise you that there is a pool of, of pilots who are more than qualified, and that if you even want a shot at getting hired by an airline, you need to have a college degree. Um, it, it, preferably something aviation-related, aviation science, aviation management. It requires a college degree in that case. And that is for the airlines. And it's just as much for the corporate environment. Go look at companies like NetJets and FlexJet and Wheels Up. They're looking for and need pilots, and the pilots that move up the, up the seniority list the fastest are not only the ones with the most experience, but they're the ones with the degree. So if you're thinking of pursuing aviation, going through it like I did or like Keith did through a collegiate aviation program is a great way to go about it. So realizing that's the path, I've asked my good friend Keith, who this is a screenshot, you guys probably saw the recent video we posted, uh, flying in uh, a King Air that he flies and uh, operates. In fact, here's a picture of it here. Uh, just to kind of share with you guys, to, to help bring this all home on really the day in the life of a corporate pilot, um, what, you know, Keith makes a, a very honest, I'm sure you won't mind me sharing this, but he makes a very honest six-figure living flying a very, very cool airplane um, for an awesome family and, and kind of how he ended up doing that and, and how, where he cut his teeth and, and, and made those sacrifices so he could get to where he is now. So, uh, Keith, I've got you unmuted, my friend. Can you hear me loud and clear? Hey, how's it going? I can hear you great. Cool, man. That's awesome. So, Keith, we gave you the intro here. Run me through it. Like, where did, where did this 
how did we end up here? This is awesome. Like everyone's looking at this going, I'd love to make six figures a year and fly a King Air all around. That sounds sweet, but it didn't just happen overnight. Where did we start and what is the path that we made that we took to, to realize this? I mean, you're you're 30 something too. I mean, not many people can say that. So run me through how did this run me through the journey, my friend. Well, it all started in um in college. Uh, I went and I, I got my aviation uh bachelor's degree in aviation science. Um, our school did not offer an aviation management degree, uh, the one that's a couple hours away, a little further away from my parents' house at the time, um, does. Uh, honestly, I kind of looking back, I wish that I would have went aviation management because it can open up a couple extra career opportunities if, well, yesterday I went to get my medical and as you know, kind of everything uh, income-wise is riding on passing that next medical, um, which for me is once every year until I'm 40, then it's going to be twice a year. But uh, anyway, so if you lost your medical aviation management degree, might open up or will open up a few more doors than uh, maybe an aviation science degree will. So um, got my bachelor's in aviation science, and uh, in order to do that, you have to graduate um, with your CFI. So I became a CFII, MEII, that's multi-engine instrument instructor, um, and single engine as well. Uh, and then moved, um, moved a couple hours away from school um, to become a, uh, a, a assistant manager of a, a flight school down in Baton Rouge. And, and uh, that gave me the opportunity to manage a few people that were underneath me, um, but also I was the one that was in charge of taking all the phone calls, and that's where really where my uh, career ended up taking off just just a few months into my um, flight instructing career. Somebody called me that owned their uh, owned a 210 and um, needed somebody with 500 hours, and I told them you're in luck because I literally just logged 501 today. I just got got down a couple hours ago and it all it all kind of went off from there. You know, hanging around the airport before that did happen and meeting several people um, really paid dividends later on uh, after that, that first job. That would be besides an aviation uh, degree, a uh, bachelor's degree, um, the other big thing is networking, networking, networking. Mm -hmm. We could probably do a webinar just on that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it all started off with um, with college and getting my uh, my flight instructor certificates, and then getting that first job. Some flight instructor uh, jobs are easy to come by. Um, a lot of flight instructors get into it, uh, unfortunately, with the intention of leaving. Um, you know, it's, it really isn't a bad way to go if you just want to be a uh, professional flight instructor. It'd be a excellent, excellent living, quality of life. Um, you know, right now, no one can keep flight instructors. Uh, they're all because of this pilot shortage that you were talking about, um, which is which is great, great for prospective people coming in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Talk to me, Keith. What is the what's the day in the life like for you now? I mean, how many your salary base? So whether you fly or not, you're getting paid. But how many days a week are, are you working? What's the typical mission like? What's uh, what's a day you fly like? What's what's the prep work like? I mean, run me through that process. So right now I'm flying on average. Uh, I think it's right around a hundred hour or a hundred days a year, so you know, maybe a little bit more than that. Um, really, isn't much. Breaks down to roughly, you know, two days a week or so, and uh, which is great. You know, how many people can, uh, you know, be as fortunate as some of us and say that they make uh, a living, good living, um, being able to just work, actually work two days a week, and mm -hmm. you know. Work is kind of a loose term because sometimes, but most often, it is uh, not very work-like. It's it's really enjoyable. So, a day in the life. Well, today, for instance, I went to the gym and went mountain biking, and that would pretty much sum up five days of the week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it's it's awesome. I'm not gonna lie. But you know, then uh, two days from now, when I'm gonna fly, I'll, I'll be flying the last two days of this week. You know, it's it, it's really the hurry up and wait. Some people say, you know, I get out there. Um, you know, people see see this as like, you know, I'm 
yes, I'm a corporate pilot, but there's a couple sectors in the corporate in the corporate world. There's say the charter, which we call uh, Part 135. Um, the charter departments; those are a little bit easier to come by because uh, they need more pilots, and they're typical big, typically bigger departments. So there's more jobs available. And then there's the the more private side of the quote corporate world, which is what I excuse me, which is what I'm in. Those are a little bit more difficult, and it takes a lot of networking and uh, right time, right place type of thing, which is how it worked out for me. Um, <clears throat> you know, for the private side, we like I shared with you the day that we flew. You know, flying really is like second or third on the importance list. Like for for them looking at me, they just they hired me to be the pilot. Good. Well, we expect everything to work fine. Like we expect you to be able to go out and fly. Like they don't they don't even think about the fly inside they just I want my water the exact way I want my coffee super hot I, I want this this and this on the airplane you know if you run out then don't ever let me know that you you're running low on stuff just have it fully stocked and if the stuff expires get rid of it so basically my primary objective every day is to provide the luxury the next one is really to make just Asset management. This thing, I, I have access to something that more money and something, uh, an asset that's uh, more expensive than anything else that my boss owns. And I'm the one that manages it all. And, you know, he gives me total control. He's, he's said it several times it's my airplane. He just pays the bills. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> not exactly the way it goes, but uh, that's how he likes me to take care of it. To treat it as it's mine, which I definitely do, and um, you know he he won't give me any flack. Well, you're still kind of under the gun when you're spending that much money. I can't say how much, but that much money per month. Um, you know, there's there's going to be things that you're under the microscope for. So, you know, first thing is providing that luxury. Second is making sure the asset doesn't diminish in value any more than it 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 should. Just like driving a car. Um, you know, keeping it looking great, everything smelling good, that's a big one for us. And then third is the fly-in side. So once all that stuff is taken care of, the, my major headaches, um, that day that we flew together, I was a little bit nervous uh, that day because I had all that other stuff on my mind. And you right. being the first time you flew with us, sometimes that can kind of throw the guys for the uh, for a loop. They don't, they don't take too kind of change sometimes. So I didn't know how that was going to go. Kind of had a lot of my mind. Is, eh, you can maybe tell by watching that video. But um, so anyway, the third thing is the flying sides. So now it's time to just like all you guys do when you go out there, uh, whether you're a student pilot or, or greater, you know, start with the pre-flight, then look over all the information for departure airport, in route, and then arrival airport. You know, be it weather, approaches, whatever it might be. Um, some scenarios, play out some scenarios in your head like, oh, if this happens, then I'm just going to do this, or whatever it might be. That, that, I might spend 20 minutes on doing that, and the rest of the hour that I show up before the proposed departure time is spent on the other two things I was talking about, the luxury and the asset yeah. itself. So. Uh, it's so fascinating that you talk about, I mean, you don't just hop in the airplane and, and go. We, we totally get that, but I don't think a lot of people realize the fact that Hey, you're also the guy who schedules the annual inspection, the phase checks when there's, you know, uh, an AD, whatever it may be. I mean, that's that's your job as well. It's your job to maintain the airworthiness of that aircraft. Now, obviously, boss man pays for it, but it's your job to be organized and stay on top of that. So, what a lot of these guys and gals in this webinar may not realize is it may seem so crazy now in your private or instrument training that your CFI is making you read through the ADs and learn how to look at the log books or, or hang out with the A&P in their shop and just kind of learn a thing or two. But those things you did back then, Keith, benefit you now today as you, you not only fly the airplane, you manage the airplane itself. Is that correct to say? Absolutely, absolutely. All those, all those parts in the FAR that say that the, uh, you know, it's the owner operator that that's um, required to do this, this, mm. and that. Uh, that's me. I am the owner operator in this case. I, it just doesn't come out of my checking account. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's which is great. I, I get the uh, the experience without the, the sleepless nights of 
worrying how I'm going to squeeze, you know, forty thousand yeah. dollars out of my checking account for one little yeah. fix. It gets to be a little bit ridiculous. And I, I do actually lose some sleep over it because I do care about them. Sure. And um, you know, it's 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 big money for most of us. So, yeah, yeah, I get to uh, I get to do all that. And what's really cool is I always thought, you know, and I'm sure there's some of you out there that are listening that, you know, man, I'd love to own my own airplane, whether it's a 150 or you know, you name it, a, a King Air 90 or a Baron, whatever it might be, or a Technum. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it, but. Like man, it's overwhelming. Like, how do those owners keep up with all that? I mean, you know, fortunately now because of this, and then the job that I had before this that led to this, um, now I know that what it takes. It's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, you know, thanks to smartphones and you know just using some technology to kind of you know keep notes or set reminders or whatever it might be. Take pictures and look it up right there in your pocket to see when mm -hmm. something, how much times are done. That makes it a lot easier. I live an hour away from the airplane, so you know it might sound lazy, but I don't feel like driving an hour to go check something that's going to take five minutes when I'm going to yeah, be flying yeah. three days from now. So I try to use a smartphone in my pocket as much as I possibly can for um, all of the management and tracking and everything else, and it's it's worked out great. So absolutely, yeah, it's everyone, just everyone could do it. Absolutely. It's just an avenue a lot of people don't think about. So, Keith, I'm going to throw you back on mute here so you can get back to helping. If anybody has questions for Keith, you can type those in now. He'll type them back to you. Maybe put, hey, question for Keith so he knows it's for him. And if there's a bunch, perhaps we will unmute him again at the end here to help take some of those questions. But uh, just such a neat career that he has. And I've known Keith for six, seven years now. Uh, just such a neat career he has in aviation. And did we hear how it started, right? He started just like we all need to do as a private pilot. And in his case, he started as a private pilot and went the collegiate aviation route like we're talking because even in Keith's position, even though he's working for a private individual, I guarantee you he still wouldn't have been in that spot without that degree. Or the other the the other jobs he had before he was flying this the the King Air 350, he wouldn't have been able to have until, because Keith gave you the short version of the story that he started in the 210, and there was a, a few jobs in between here and there until we got to this point. You don't just wake up one day, become a commercial pilot, and hop right seat in a King Air 350. There's opportunity, we, we have to cut your teeth somewhere as a, as a flight instructor, build up that experience, build up that logbook, and really go about it that way. So as you can see, and I know I'm, I'm talking a little bit long, I do want to answer and take questions here towards the end. We're almost to the end, guys. Uh, aviation, though, is a booming industry that, uh, that just needs pilots bad. But, you know, like they don't, like he said, they don't want just any pilots. They want college graduates, and they want pilots with the hours needed. So it, it's just basic formalities, we know what it takes now to turn this passion into, into dollars for us is what it really comes down to. And I'm excited to share just something. I've been waiting to share this news now with you guys for, I want to say, and Clay, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's been over two years. I would say that Clay and I have been working on this and a lot of other amazing individuals we've been working on this for, and I haven't been able to share it with a lot of you guys because of non-disclosure agreements and a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff, but very, very honored, very, very excited to share this with you guys uh, that uh, M0A.com uh, has partnered with National American University. And when I say partnered, I mean we literally built the entire ground curriculum for them over the past two years. This is a, a brand new collegiate aviation program that's going to be rolling out to all, I believe, 37 of their campuses. Uh, right now, the main location, uh, for flying at least, is out in Sioux Falls. We're expanding out to Texas and all around the country here. Uh, at a rapid pace with that, but start on the ground training now, and it literally, and this is a benefit if you're already an online ground school member of ours, it's basically our online ground school, but now for college credit. 
which just opens up avenues of allowing us to accept uh, uh, VA money and student loans and just really opens up aviation to the masses. So if that's something, if you love my teaching style and say, wow, I can, I can earn a degree in my passion now, you can do all this online like you're already learning from us. I kid you not, guys, and it's literally what you're already doing in our online ground school just now for college credit. It is, uh, it's a, a blessing to us and it'll be huge for, for you guys as well. NAUAviation.com to check it out and learn more. And I also know too that aviation is quite expensive. So my good friend Carl Valeri, every year, he's a JetBlue captain. Every year he writes uh, aerospace scholarships. It's a Kindle book. I believe it's only $10. Uh, and lists, I believe it's like 600 pages of aviation scholarships. So two great resources for you guys. If you want to learn more about what we're doing to really change collegiate aviation, and this is um, not your, your typical, uh, typical collegiate aviation that you think about. This is, this is collegiate aviation at uh, community college type prices. I mean, it is unbelievable how reasonable everything is compared to uh, um, some uh, some of the larger schools and everything else and you know the kind of instruction and quality that we turn out so you want to learn more about that NAUAviation.com there's the admissions phone number the admissions email I was chatting with them today they're excited to chat with you um, just, just shoot them an email, reach out to them, just tell them you want to learn more and see what, see what financial options work for you because let's be honest, aviation is expensive. That's why I have Carl's scholarship book here as well. Aviation is not cheap, but it can be so very rewarding. And at no greater time is that risk reward, the reward is much larger than that risk now with this pilot shortage. So uh, do check everything out. Um, we worked again two years. We've work, been working on this collegiate aviation program, and it's just uh, it's awesome to finally see it come to fruition. Uh, launching for this uh, fall winter semester with our first students. It's going to be a great opportunity to get some uh, one on one interactions with myself uh, and our team here uh, and Clay's great team for flying some beautiful G1000 aircraft and just. Um, We've really got something big up our sleeves and are really going to uh, deliver some value. No longer will you just be a number like you will at some of the larger schools. You're going to really get that personal attention and you're going to find that students are going to finish uh, with less dollars out of their pocket and yet more, uh, uh, more experience, uh, better experiences in that logbook. So I'll leave these resources up here so you guys can see them. And let's take some questions now. If Clay, Keith, Matt weren't able to answer your questions, I'm happy to take them. Any questions you guys have about flight training, about careers in aviation, about, about collegiate aviation, whatever it may be, uh, I'm honored and more than happy to take those questions from you all now. And remember, we've got a couple hundred people on this webinar, so I can't take every single question, but I'm going to do my best to take a, a, good, uh, uh, a good bit of them here. Uh, let's see. Caroline, thank you so much. Coming from you, that's awesome. Brandon, thank you so, uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Minnow asked a great question. He said, hey guys, from Sydney, Australia. Minnow, what time is it in Sydney, Australia right now? We're like getting ready to go to bed. If I just start your day, if I had to guess. Um, here's how it works. What we find is we deal with a ton of international students. In fact, if you go back to the very beginning of this webinar where it talked about Asia needing a quarter of a million pilots, I would argue that 95% of them train here in the United States. Why do they come over here to train? It's more affordable. Our fuel is cheaper. Our rental rates are cheaper. We don't have user fees. Our airspace is friendlier than in a place, say, like China or something like that. It's just easier to learn to fly and to get it done here. Plus, remember that an FAA certificate can take you anywhere. Getting an FAA certificate is like the standard. You see, it's, it's very easy to take an FAA certificate and then go transfer it to JAA or CAA or some other aviation authority in another country. It's more difficult to say, learn to fly in 
you know, I'll use Australia as an example, even though Australia is a very, uh, it's not as bad as some other countries uh, to, to transfer. If you learn to fly in Australia and want to come to the United States, uh, the FAA is very strict and it's a very difficult transfer process involving money and more check rides and, and everything else. Whereas transferring it from FAA over to, I can't remember, is Australia, uh, is, are you CAA, JAA? I can't remember what uh, uh, Australia falls under. But anyways, transferring it that route is a much easier transition in that case. That is why the U.S. is booming with international flight students right now. So uh, think of that as an option as well for you guys. So um, just looking at that. Uh, Milena asked, uh, is an associate's degree okay or does it have to be a bachelor's? As it stands right now, the big guys, when I say big guys, JetBlue, Southwest, Delta, all, all the, think of the legacy carriers, want a bachelor's degree. However, if you're okay working for the small guys, like let's say you're okay working at the regionals, like a Delta Connection, an Express Jet, what used to be Comair, United Express, like the smaller carriers like that, they'll, they'll accept an associate's degree. But if you want to flow through into the big guys one day, you're going to need to have that bachelor's degree. That's what they're expecting. That's what they're uh, looking for. Jung asks, is it uh, possible to become a commercial pilot um, between age 20 and 30? Absolutely. I became a commercial pilot at at 18, which is the youngest you can actually do it. Uh, so private instrument uh, worked through when I was 17, um, late 18, and then very late 18, about to turn 19, um, knocked out my commercial pilot, and then literally like two weeks later knocked out my CFI even. So there are great ways to do it um, with that. Phil asks, where is the location of NAU? So NAU has 37 campuses around the United States. The first one with a flight school is in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. We're going to be expanding those out here relatively quickly. Um, so how it stands right now is you would do all your training online from wherever you're in Virginia, Phil. So you could do all your training online in Virginia. And then when it came time to do the actual flying, you'd go out to Sioux Falls for the month, the two months, whatever it may be uh, in that case. And we chose Sioux Falls because of... Um, uh, you know, weather-wise and everything else, we're not dealing with thunderstorms in the afternoons constantly like we are. Yes, they get some winters and such, but uh, nice stable air and everything else um, with that. Um, Bradley asked a great question. Hey, uh, and Keith, would you mind helping Bradley with this? Because um, Keith falls into that category, Bradley. Keith, uh, Bradley's question came in at 942. They're all time stamped. If you look, um, and you can see that one come in. Uh, and Keith would have a great response to that one. My good friend Ed, that name jumped right out at me. Hey, Ed, and Ed has, Ed, Ed, how many hours have you spent with me flying around Jacksonville doing traffic? I'd, I'd say a whole lot of them, a couple hundred at least. Ed's a very, very good friend of mine. And Ed, you do need to come down and visit and see the new studio and everything else. He asked, what about starting an aviation career if the perspective pilot is older, say 40 plus, is there an age where it may not be wise to invest in this career? Excellent question. A question that probably has been asked here all already here. Um, so it applies to a lot of us. And the answer is yes and no. And, and here's why. Because airlines have a mandatory retirement, unfortunately. The FAA has mandated that airline pilots retire at 65. So let's say, Ed, you're 45 years old, but you haven't done a lick of training. You've never even taken your first lesson just yet. You're a little bit behind the curve because you can, you're going to spend two, three, four years pursuing that degree, getting everything up to snuff. You're probably five, six years out from getting hired, and now your career is only going to be 13, 14, maybe 15 years if you really hustle through it before it's time to retire. The math is just kind of against you in that case. Whereas, Ed, something else you could do is now, and Ed, I know you already have a head start with a lot of this. You already have your commercial and everything else. So you have a, certainly have a head start with that. But what about just becoming a flight instructor? I mean, when I was first flight instructing, I was a nobody and I was charging 20 bucks an hour 
to flight instruct, and that rate's gone up quite significantly now. I now have a waiting list of people to, to fly with me. Um, but you can make, don't let anybody, the thing I hate the most is when people say, you want to make a million dollars in aviation, start with two. Like I just, that phrase makes me mad because it's a limiting belief and it's just not true. The things you want most in life, you find a way to make them happen. You can make a living at a, as a flight instructor. I'm not saying you're going to have a lake house and drive a Tesla, but you're going to pay your bills and, and you're, going to, you're, you're going to have a job that doesn't feel like a job because you're flying airplanes every day and that's your passion. You're not just punching a clock somewhere. You see, it's, for a lot of people, it's more about the lifestyle and loving what you do than it is about the money. So if that's the case, just being a flight instructor, if you're older, is a great way to, and it's a great way to segue into it, because I could be a flight instructor just on the weekends. Uh, a gentleman, world famous Uncle Larry does this. For those of you who are fans and friends of ours, you all know world famous Uncle Larry. Larry is a doctor of pharmacy Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday, he's a flight instructor. And he makes a very good living as a pharmacist. He doesn't need to flight instruct, but it's his it's his gateway out of the crazy world of the hospital. It's, it's his real passion with it, right? And medicine is certainly a passion of his, but as is aviation. And he gets that fixing on the weekends and kind of moonlights that way. So, and after work. So there's just, there's a lot of great options you can go um, with it. Brian R., absolutely, credits do transfer. So this is something else cool. Clay and I were chatting about this uh, uh, to begin the, the webinar too is that if you go to NAU with a, you already have a private pilot, you already have an instrument rating, those count as credits towards what you've already done. You may have to test in and, and certify that yes, I am more than just holding the certificate because there's a difference between having the certificate and being proficient, right? Demonstrate that you're proficient with it, which shouldn't take but a few hours, but you've already built those credits up. So someone like Phil, you know, Phil has already got some certificates and ratings. Those transfer in already as college credit towards a degree and you're already a step ahead of the game. That's how I got through my collegiate aviation so quickly. I transferred in with a private and an instrument already, private certificate, instrument rating. I transferred in as almost a junior already credit-wise just based on how everything kind of worked out. I wasn't quite, junior's an exaggeration. I was certainly a sophomore, but almost, um, you know, uh, a junior in that case. So just little things to uh, um, look at and note, uh, note there. Um, and uh, Shauna, it's a, it's a four-year uh, program. Uh, and it can, be, it can be sped up, though. Uh, it's because uh, we realize, and this is the neat thing about collegiate aviation, and Keith will tell you this, I can tell you this, that Yes, it's a four-year bachelor program, but if you hustle through your aviation stuff, that is very much self-paced, that you can work through these type of items. So it's not to say you couldn't get a four-year degree done in three, three and a half years, as you, but it, it depends on the person. I mean, it becomes your job and your life. I'm not saying everybody can do it. it it's, a, it's a lifestyle to make that happen, and a lot of things have to fall into place, and weather has to be good for your flights and everything else, but... Um, there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff with that. So um, let me uh, let me see. Just continuing again, guys. You got to remember, there's a couple hundred people uh, on this uh, on this webinar, so I'm not going to be able to take every single question. But I'm going to do my best uh, to uh, uh, to answer them here. Um, Clay, when you're done typing, uh, Mark S has a good question. Came in at 9:49. Uh, right up your alley to help with that one. Um, awesome, Denton says, my goal is to receive my CFI by the time I retire in 10 years and instruct as long as I can. What a cool goal, my friend, to use the current career, which is a good career that pays the bills, to pursue a passion like aviation and then become a flight instructor and use that as a retirement gig to supplement some income and more importantly, share that passion with others and help others then pursue this dream. Denton, uh, from knowing you on the webinars as a ground school member and everything else, I know you're going to be an awesome flight instructor, and I hope uh, we play a small role in your big success with that, man. I think that's going to be awesome here. Um, let me see here. Um, 
Awesome, guys. Just some great, great stuff. I see Matt and Keith and Clay are answering a lot here. Um, awesome. Cool, Ethan. Thank you. Thank you for your service, too, man. It's awesome. Um, Chris asked a good question, uh, talking about taking out loans for additional pilot training. So, Chris, it depends, is a question. Is, is aviation the career goal? Because certainly then you could go the, the financing route with it um, because there's that end game. But my friend, if aviation is just a hobby for you, I wouldn't recommend it. I would just continue to save and, and go to your bank and open up a separate savings account and then save up for instruments. You already got private done. Let's let's commit to flying once a month, twice a you know twice a month, whatever the budget will allow. Now, if you want to be a career pilot, though, you are going to want to look into some financing options, and that's why I'm so just blessed and excited because previously we couldn't do anything financing. Yeah, we're just an online ground school. You know, we we'll, we'll send you out to whatever flight school you want to go to, but we couldn't accept VA money or any of these benefits and and. You know, these, these service men and women who made these sacrifices have this benefit. We just weren't able to accept it. Uh, but now being collegiate affiliated uh, and building that collegiate aviation program, it opens us up to that and opens you up, Chris, to different financing options as well. So it just makes life easier for everyone if you want to go the career route. My friend, I'm never a big fan of taking on debt. Um, but if, it's, um, if there's a certain reward uh, down the line for it, absolutely. Uh, if, if it leads to you getting a paycheck uh, to help service that debt, absolutely. Um, but uh, I don't like a shot in the dark just being a hobbyist or anything like that uh, for it, if that, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Sam, yes, NAU does accept uh, VA funding. In fact, they have an entire department uh, that's solely what they do. Uh, and they're just experts, forwards and backwards, down to a state level. Uh, at helping you with that sort of stuff. So again, the number is there. Obviously, they're 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 closed now. It's late, uh, but send them an email so they get it first thing in the morning. Give them a call first thing in the morning. Go on the website, fill out the learn more form so they know how to follow up with you. They're a knowledgeable bunch. It's going to answer all your questions here for you. And if they don't, you guys know how to get in touch with me. My email is just Jason at m zero a dot com, like you see at the bottom of your screen. J a s o n at mzeroa.com if you have a question for me. And again, realize I won't be able to get to everyone's questions tonight, so do send me an email though so I can get to them in the morning um, as we go here. Um, reading some more. Warren asked a good question. He said, how much can an, a new average CF double I make in a month? I'll tell you, geez, Tom, who I just flew with today. Let me see, is Tom on this webinar? Because Tom is flying a ton. I don't know if Tom, I told him he didn't have to be on this webinar. Uh, I don't see Tom on this webinar. Uh, but anyways, um, certainly uh, when I was in my boom uh, up in Jacksonville, I mean, I, would, geez, I was flying, not including traffic instruction, my friend, charging I believe I got up to as high as 40 bucks an hour when I was in Jacksonville. That's before I owned my own airplane. And I was doing just about 100 hours a month, a little bit, a little bit less than that uh, at, at 40 bucks an hour um, with that. So it was, it was good as a, I was a single guy and everything else, uh, but uh, it, was, it was good. It, you know, it was, it, I loved it. I, I still, that's why I'm still a full-time instructor. We went, certainly went a different way about it, now becoming an online ground instructor. And you guys have seen our YouTube videos and everything else. And, and uh, we just got pulled a, a different direction with that. But it's just, we're very, very blessed, very, very fortunate uh, just to be able to do, like, I, I don't feel like we have a job. Like, I was driving to work this morning, like, pumped, like, excited to go to work. I mean, when's the last time someone can say that? Um, and I just get to sit in a studio and talk about airplanes. And then we did get to go flying today. We did some beautiful air-to-air -to -air photography today. Like it was just, it, it seems like a dream. And to do it um, with my wife Ashley's in the business, and our daughter Ella gets to come to work with us. We have a, a babysitter that that comes and watches Ella. It, it's just very cool. Again, if you're ever in Central Florida, we're in Ocala. You're always welcome to come uh, tour the studio. I'd love to show you the studio, show you the airplanes, everything else. So. Uh, you can look into uh, that uh, as well. Um, 
So let me see here. Uh, so Jacob, we've, we've chatted about that. We can use it for things like beyond private pilot, like instrument and those sort of things. So, and we can chat more about that, uh, Jacob, as well. Um, Awesome. Diane in Oklahoma, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you. Armando said CFIs are charging $50 an hour in California. Absolutely. Well, and again, when I was charging 40 an hour, that had to be 10 years ago. You know, so rates have certainly gone up. I certainly charge a whole lot more than that now um, and everything else. So it's, uh, it's uh, cool. Um, Wade asked, what are your thoughts on building up time as a freight pilot? Man, I, I look at it like this. Hours are hours in the logbook. A lot of people talk about quality of hours, like Jason, you know, if you towed banners for a thousand hours, it's not the most quality of hours, but hours are still hours. They get you closer to meeting that 1500 hour requirement and everything else. They may not be the most quality hours, you're right. I get really good at slow flight, right? That's about it. But to be told, banner towers are good pilots. Have you ever seen someone pick up a banner? They are a darn good pilot. Go on YouTube after this and watch uh, banner towing uh, pickups. You'll be impressed with how they do it. They are, uh, no joke, good pilots um, with that. Um, just reading. I'm going to take a few more here, guys, and I've got to get going to bed. I'd like to say good night to our little one uh, as well, and I've got an early morning myself. So uh, let me just pick a few more out here. And again, any questions uh, myself and the team here missed? Jason at m0a.com. Shoot me an email. I'll be happy to uh, chat with you more in the morning. Lucas, thank you uh, so much uh, with that. Andre, great question. He said, how important is an aviation degree as opposed to another uh, type of degree? Is an aviation degree a requirement or is another degree like business admin, will that suffice? So will it suffice the requirement to check the box that says, yes, I have a degree? Well, yeah, it'll do that. But in this competitive market right now, where we're, we're we've got a, a large pilot pool uh, that we're um, that we're trying to cycle cy cycle through to the airlines, they're going to choose the guys with the aviation degree first, and then we get to this pilot shortage where you say, well, geez, they're just going to have to take him, you know, just take me at this point. It then comes down to, and this brings it back to Ed's original question about age. It comes down to seniority. So how quickly you move up the chain towards the number one, the number two captain, where you make your own schedules and you get the top pay. You see if you start older, uh, it's, there's just time is against you to build seniority. Also, when they build seniority, they look at things like experience. They look at things like the degree track you chose. And, and an aviation management or aviation science degree is going to win out over any other degree every other time. It's just an extra feather in your cap with that. Just things to think about. It's not, it's not a huge setback if you already have it and it's already done, but just, uh, uh, just think, uh, think about that um, as well when you're, when you're looking into that. So um, thank you, Phil. Awesome. Um, thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, let me see. Uh, let me pick another one here, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Um, Craig, that's awesome, man. Cool. Um, Brandon, can't wait to have you on board in the ground school. Thank you, man. Um, Andrew, awesome. Uh, send me an email about that, Andrew. Let's share that conversation. That's a little bit outside the scope of this webinar, uh, but I'll be happy to sh chat with you about it via email. Um, Jonathan, I'll... I'll uh, um, I'll end on this one. Carolina, thank you for your, uh, thank you for that too. I'll end on Jonathan's question. Any other questions, email me, jasonm0a.com. Jonathan asks, do you think the pilot shortages will apply to the helicopter side of the industry? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. We're feeling it hardest right now, though, on the fixed wing side of things. Uh, that's where it's hitting the hardest. It'll, it'll make its way over there, but I don't believe it's going to be as significant. And the second question was, uh, can I attend NAU uh, if you are uh, from Canada? And the answer is absolutely, my friend. In fact, you, my friend, need to reach out to admissions, like shoot them an email tonight so they get it in the morning. Reach out to them because there are some huge, I see Clay probably chimed in there, some huge advantages based on what providence you live in. I'm talking like big time grant money that 
Clay, you can fill in on the rest of the information, but like we'll pay for your private pilot training. It's if you're if you're from Canada and you're on this webinar right now, I want to say Alberta area is one of them. I can't remember all the areas, but legitimate, you need to email the NAU admissions because they have a, a deal where um, I don't know how it works, but the Canadian government is paying for private pilot certificates essentially. It's a good day to be a, a Canadian, I guess. Um, so just Think about that and reach out to them as well. So uh, listen, guys, again, I apologize. We have a couple hundred people in this webinar. I can't possibly answer every question, nor can, uh, uh, nor can uh, Matt and uh, Keith and Clay. So shoot me an email personally. I'll get to it in the morning, jason at m0a.com, like you see written out down here, guys. Listen, thanks so much for all that you guys do. Thanks so much just for being such a blessing to myself my beautiful wife, Ashley, our gorgeous daughter, Ella, this great team here at M0A.com and now a part of NAU, National American University. You guys just absolutely rock. If there is anything, anything at all we can do this week to help make you a safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Guys, enjoy the rest of your evening and most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great night, guys. See ya.